This video is going to look at how to make a frequency distribution in Excel. And this is the video for section 4.4 in your book, which looks at how to gather and organize data. And there are a multitude of other ways that you can um, organize the data into different charts like stem and leaf plots and bar charts and others. So read through your book to get a feel for all of those, but I want to show you the main one that we use and show you how to do it in Excel. So this says the data in millions of dollars Below are the value of 16 sports franchises in a given year. We want to create a grouped frequency distribution of the data using five classes. And I'm going to follow the steps that are outlined in your book to do this. I'm sure there's other ways that you could make frequency distributions, but these are the steps that we use in this class to make an official frequency distribution, which actually, if y'all go on to statistics, these are the same steps that we use in statistics. So to start off with, let's organize our data and sort it in numerical order. So to do that, I'm going to highlight all of my data. And then up at the top, I want to sort smallest to largest. So I had to go to the editing menu the way my Excel is displaying right now. So from here, we need to figure out our class width. Class width is defined to be the maximum minus the minimum divided by the number of classes and you will always be given the number of classes. So in this case, to find our class width, our maximum is $1,600 million, our minimum is 868, and then we're told to use five classes. So we get our class width, we do max minus min in parentheses divided by the number of classes, and then we always round up. So this will get rounded up to 147. You always want to round it up to the next whole number. So then to get our classes, we will need our lower class limit, which I'm going to abbreviate by LCL, so that's lower class limit, and then we'll need upper class limits, which I'm going to put as UCL for upper class limit. Now our very first lower class limit is always the minimum, which in this case is 868. And then once you have your minimum, you take that number and add your class width to it, which in this case is 137. So I'm going to take my very first lower class limit and add the class width of 147 to it. And then if you did a formula, you can click on that formula and drag it down until we have three more to get a total of five lower class limits since we want five classes. Then our upper class limits are going to be one less than where the next one starts. So our first class starts at 868, the next one starts at 1015. We need to stop this one right before we get to 1015 so that we don't overlap, but we don't leave any data out. So it's going to stop at 1014. So we pick the number just below where the next class starts. And then you can take that number and add your class width again to get the rest of our upper class limits. So we get all of our lower class limits and upper class limits. The next thing we do is we get our frequency or count of how many classes are in each of these categories. So the first one is 868 to 1014. So I'm just going to highlight all the numbers on my chart that are between 868 and 1014. And if you highlight them down here at the bottom, it tells you a count of how many you've highlighted, which is kind of nice. It told me that I had six highlighted, so I didn't have to actually count it myself. Sometimes if you've got a really big list, it's hard to count on Excel. So it's nice that when you highlight, it'll tell you how many you've highlighted. So then our next class is 1015 to 1161. So I'm going to highlight all the numbers from 1015 to 1161. And I like changing everything to different colors. It just keeps me organized. So that's why I'm changing each class to a different color. Then 1162 to 1308. So we've got three in this one. Then 1309 to 1455. We've got three more in that one. And then our last one, 14.15.6 to 16.02, we just have two in there. And one thing I like to do at the end is I like to sum my frequencies to make sure that I've got all the data points accounted for. We had 16 at the beginning, and when we sum them, we do sum to 16. So we got everything accounted for in our frequency table. Um, and from here, if we wanted to, we could turn this into a graph or a histogram. So leading up to histograms, I like to label mine with the classes at the bottom. And it still gets a little funny labeling. So I actually like to create a separate 
label column before I make my graph. It just shows my classes. So 686 to 1014, 1015 to 1161, 1162 to 1308, 1309 to 1455, and then 1456 to 1602. Again, I'm doing these labels because I like to put them when I make my histogram. I think it makes my chart look nice. And if you don't type out the label, sometimes it Excel gets funny with how it labels things. So to turn our frequencies into a histogram, I'm going to highlight my frequencies and then insert a bar graph. I think it calls it a column graph. And then I'm gonna change my layout to layout eight. Technically with histogram, the bars touch. And what's nice when you change it to layout eight, it makes everything um, have access titles. So we can label this um, sports franchises. So this is the classes down here at the bottom, and we're going to have the frequency going up the side. And one thing that's kind of funny, though, is we just have numbers down here. That's not telling us the value of these franchises at all. So that's where those labels I created come in. Uh, to get the labels down here, we right-click on one of the numbers and go to Select Data. And then we want to edit the horizontal axis labels, and I want them to be these numbers. I've got it half covered up. Let me move my graph so it's not in the way. There we go. So right-click on a number, select data, edit the horizontal axis, and I want them to be these labels that I typed out just a second ago. So I'm going to highlight those and click OK. Come back, graph. And so you can see that it tells us the value of the team in millions, and then how many of each of the teams fell into that range. And if you wanted, you could right click and click add data label to tell you specifically how many sports franchises fell into each one of those classes. So histograms are nice. They easily, easily tell us that most of the for, sports franchises were not valued at that much money relatively, and then a couple were valued significantly higher.